Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're looking at the Black Dragon, number one. This is Epic Comics. Epic Comics was a subset of Marvel Comics in the 80s. This was like a precursor to DC's Vertigo, if you remember. That was like a prestige line of, of uh, super influential artsy-fartsy comics that was just so good, so good. But Ep uh, Epic was Marvel tried doing it first. Marvel always had like a little bit of like... Hate to say it, but I, I think it's true. Marvel had like a little bit of embarrassment of, about comic books. They, they they wanted to be taken more seriously. So they they and to their credit, they always experimented. They tried with the magazines in the in the eight uh, in the seventies and early eighties, and then in when the magazines kind of petered out, they 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 you know parallel sh parallel shifted to like more of like a, a mature line of of comic books, and that was epic. <coughs> Uh, guys, I'm sorry. Every time I start talking, I cough. But uh, where was I? So they they went with comic books that were more mature. Notice that the, this is a Marvel comic, but they don't have to do the uh, the uh, Comics Code Authority, and it sold directly into comic book stores. So the price was was more expensive. I, th I think comics were like a dollar twenty five at the time, the cover price, and this was dollar fifty. And look at this gorgeous cover. This is by. Uh, Bolton, uh, John Bolton, and he was notoriously slow, And uh, but what a great artist. You you may know him from The Killing Joke, and maybe you know him from uh, uh, Camelot 3000, but just what a phenomenal talent. And uh, it's this is a six-issue limited series, and this was a strange comic for me to pick up, because I was, at this point in history, I was superheroes, gangbusters superheroes. I didn't, I, even though I played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons at the time, I didn't pick up anything that was non-superhero comic books. No Conan, nothing like that. But this one, I don't know what it was. I, I, I picked this up. And maybe because I knew from right out it was, it was a, a six-issue limited series. So, the writer is Chris, oh, that's why. The writer was Chris Claremont, and I was an X-Men fiend. So uh, there we go. And the artist, John Bolton, does the insight. Uh, Tom, o I, I can't pronounce that. Uh, Oisowski was it was the letter, uh, uh, I don't know, Graham Marks. Archie Goodwin and Joe Duffy. What can I say? Uh, Jim Shooter. Jeez, that's... Archie Goodwin was a phenomenal talent. Uh, I knew him mostly from the Epic line. That's how I first heard of him. Like I always say, like, met him, like like I know these people. But you know what? In, in a way, I do. I, <laughs> I, I do feel like I know these people. I know them from their work. But I first met Archie Goodwin from this Epic line of comics. He was a phenomenal editor. And as I got older and bought more back issues and bought collections, and then I, you know, ev even more recently, I'd say in the past 10 years, I've been buying Marvel magazines, I noticed that Archie Goodwin was a phenomenal editor way before he even joined Marvel. He he was doing like creepy and eerie and stuff like that. He would wrote, he he, he wrote, he was the editor, just a phenomenal talent. So I think DC, uh, DC, I think Marvel hired him to, 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 to get like more legitimacy or whatever, but just a phenomenal talent. And uh, let's just look at the indicia. This is, uh, I, I know the year. But I don't want to say anything uh, until I see it. But uh, it's uh, right on the cover. It's uh, copyright 1985, dollar fifty. Uh, but it came out in '86. And J John Bolton w w was uh, notoriously slow. But look at this artwork. So it's set in like a realistic England nights and, and stuff like that. And uh, I I just I don't know. I just I just love. So John Bolton's doing the coloring and, and doing the uh, the art, and he does not like when other people ink his stuff. But sometimes the the company will will force an inker because because he's just very slow. But uh, if you notice, there's no inker. So this is pure John Bolton, and just 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 wonderful. Um, the, this is old fashioned coloring, so the coloring is kind of like comic booky coloring. I think it. This is one of the few times that that I will say like I think uh, they could have used like. Modern coloring probably would have served this this beautiful artwork just a little bit. I mean, look look at that panel. I I think more art, you know, modern art palette would would, uh, would would service this better. But this is brutal. This is knights. This is knights fighting. Nobody nobody shooting laser beams. Um, I really do like uh, the as far as I know, and I'm I'm no expert, but uh, as far as I know. The, 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 they're trying to keep like anachronisms out so like the armor and weaponry and fighting styles like kind of kind of fit so like you know because i played dungeons dragons at the time like i expected like fully plated and stuff like that but w w they're wearing like 
chain mail and stuff and here he's thrown into a dungeon and i mean look 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 at the coloring on, on the face you know it's it's not the best but uh uh and to tell you the truth I, I'm, I'm just talking about the comic book not not overall so this this man was a uh, uh james dunreath he's called the black dragon and he's a british nobleman uh served to pledge elder of aquitaine but uh, he, uh, this treachery in the land, you know, and uh, his loyalty is called into question. I just, it's like kind of trippy colors. You know what? I I haven't seen this probably since the '80s, and I don't remember the colors being this this vivid. But here he is, as he's in prison, beat up. He's seeing visions of the, his namesake, the the Black Dragon, and now uh, you know he's freaking out. Um, again, I'm not particularly talking about this this comic as a just like epic epic in general i uh so keep in mind x-men is going full-on gangbusters at this time chris claremont's at the top of his game he's a rock star in, in comics john bolton is, is is a rock star so this was just like a big deal and i think this was one of the few times that my my local comic book store owner larry just was like get this this is going to be big and you know and he was right but I, it's kind of forgotten but I, I i loved it at the time and i I just love like the realistic architecture. Look, look, this is classic Chris Claremont. Look at all the dialogue. Look what's happening. There was a few, you know, the the battle pages weren't heavy on the dialogue, but uh, Chris Claremont will make up for it. He, he pound for pound, I think he's one of the uh, the densest dialogue writers in, in in all the comic books. So he's he's got to like clear his name. He's been accused of treachery, and he's go. I, I just I just I don't know. Just this. I, I like it. I, I, I like this a lot. That looks very uncomfortable. Thank God we're born in the modern age, right, guys? <laughs> and, you know, he takes his friend and then, you know, witnesses banditry going on. And, you know, I just, I just I've said it before in, in, in a previous video that I, I used thought, like, the default setting of humanity up until, like, now it has been cruelty, you know, and, and you know, people had to develop selfishness in order to to survive if you ask me and uh you know so i'm i'm like when i see like noble people in in the past i'm always like i take it with a grain of salt like really like like tribalism and, and, and clans and stuff like that they were formed for a reason because this a healthy distrust of, of the of the other you know you needed that to survive these days but what do i know so like the altruistic knight errand you know it's such a romantic noble story time trope because it's just something you don't believe and here you know this this knight in disguise is really a woman what's going on you know why are you disguised as a man and i have to and i'm just trying to get through the story uh she he tripped me you know there's gonna be a fight you know i'm not gonna fight a, a woman blah 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 and oh i thought it was at the end of this page but it's not but uh you find out that robin hood shows up and merry man and it's just like such a, a great realistic but legendary story. The Black Dragon gets involved with Robin Hood and the Merry Men, and uh, if I remember correctly, like the the this there's a sorceress involved who's who's causing all the machinations, and she's may or may not be Morgan Le Fay. So it's like all of these English troop uh, tropes thrown together into this this six issue wonderful medieval tale that's. Mostly realistic, but again, you know, I, I already mentioned that there's like a sorceress, stuff like that. So, you know, it's like, it, it in, in a Dungeons & Dragons world, I'd call it a magic light campaign. And and I really liked it. I mean, the, you can't go wrong with Chris Claremont. And uh, John Bolton's artwork is just phenomenal. My only criticism, and I and I didn't even realize this until now I'm looking through, is, is, is the color just is just too vivid and too bright for this. I, I, it, 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 it could have used a, a more like subtle modern uh, palette with a with, uh, with little bit more variations rather than the sharp contrast. But, uh, you know, what, 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 what I know. So here you go. I, I really like this. You could get this in, in a, uh, a collected edition. It's kind of cheap. These, these are kind of hard to find because I don't think they printed a lot. Um, I'm kind of more 
interested and, and let you know that that there was another line called Epic Comics that, that was Marvel doing uh, different stuff. Oh, let's look at the back cover. This was Swords of the Swashbuckler. <laughs> Swords of the Swashbucklers, a Marvel graphic novel by Epic. And this And then at first it started out as, as a graphic novel, then it was a bi-monthly series. And I, I skipped on this because uh, if it wasn't Mike and Star Wars at this time in, in, in my life, I, I, I didn't read it. But now I'm kind of interested in going back and picking up... Uh, back issues because it is bill mantelow who who wrote the micronauts and uh jackson uh juice i always said guys but uh, i've been hearing other people in interviews saying juice so what, what uh i'll take their but and butch guys a uh, butch juice and jackson juice are the same person and i still want to say guys but i've been hearing interviews they've been saying juice so I'll, I'll you know and they work with the guys so I'll, I'll take their pronunciation over mine so you know epic did everything they had fantasy they had superheroes they had science fiction and then later on when sales started to dwindle they just they had marvel fanfare and marvel fanfare started out as original work by like high talent high professionals they tried to keep it as high quality as possible then later on it just became inventory issues and if you follow my channel you know that an inventory issue is if you know back then when you were hired to write say x-men or avengers or fantastic four it was just assumed that you were doing that comic till circumstances stopped like that was that was a full-time regular gig until you know either the sales got really bad or you died or uh you know they hired some rock star who who just wanted you wanted your shot so you know chuck dixon said like if you wrote batman you you did 13 issues a year and one of them had to be a standalone that they shelved just in case there was like a, a problem with the deadlines or, or or something that they needed to just whip out a comic at a moment's notice so that's what marvel fanfare ended up being so it started out such high quality comic matter of fact that i'll showcase some marvel fanfare and then later on down the road you could just see it was just it's just inventory issue number five but you know i i, I would love to see those inventory issues so it to me, I, I didn't mind. But there you go. Now I'm rambling. Black Dragon by, by Marvel Comics, by Epic Comics. Chris Claremont, writer. Oh, the word, Chef's Kiss. You know, at, at John Bolton. You don't see him doing artwork that much in, inside comics. He's, you know, does a lot of covers these days. He commands so much money. But this, to me, is one of the few times I can remember off the top of my head where he did the interior artwork. So thanks a lot. I appreciate your time to watch my videos uh, i'm trying to keep them shorter and if you have any suggestions anything you want me to showcase just let me know thanks a lot i'm enjoying the comments see you tomorrow with another comic bye bye